This is the story of our friendship. This is the way it began. Hey. Hey. A lot of things have been said about Jackson. What he is, what he did. But this is who he always was to me. Before the bad years. And what happened? Jackson was a good kid. He was an altar boy, for Christ's sakes. If this were any kind of world except the shithole that it is, things might have been different. Tragedy today in the city of South Greenwich, Rhode Island. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, you need to understand some things about us, who we were. Most of all, you have to understand where we come from. This is South Greenwich, Rhode Island. The shittiest fucking place on earth. This town was built around a couple factories. The biggest one, Smith Brothers, used to make gas masks and other stuff. You know, safety equipment. That's all gone, though. Jackson grew up on the poor half of town. I grew up on the better side, where everyone lived off credit. Champagne lifestyles and ginger ale budgets, my mom used to say. No matter which side you were on, though, the bastards were always right at the edge of the clearing. I'd already learned that early on. I need to get by. This is our path. Gotta pay. Who says it's your path? This does. Tony, go long. I'm open. Uh, uh. <laughs> I just want to go. You have to give me a kiss. Hey, baby. Did your father call? No. You want dinner? Oh, no, honey. That's all right. Mommy's so tired. remember the day Jackson came to our school. His mother transferred from a job in Jersey to be closer to family after his father's accident. Not that they knew any of that. All they knew is that he looked dirty. His clothes were wrong. That was enough. He was at the bottom of the food chain, which took some of the pressure off me. 
for a while, I guess that was good enough. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I want to see some freaking bodies hit the floor. Jimmy, good hustle, buddy. Come on, let's go. Emily, this is the fourth time this quarter you have failed to bring your gym clothes. You are now officially flunking this class. Are you aware of that? Everybody stop. Jackson Marshall, get your skid mark shorts to center court now. Let me ask you something, Jackson. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Are you sure you don't need to take a dump or something? No, sir. Well, then maybe you could tell me why you're running like you have a load in your shorts. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm told that some people cherish their childhood. My mom always talks about being young and beautiful and the world being full of possibility. But for some of us, we were ugly. There was no possibility. Some of us were told right off the bat, there's no room for you here. Nobody wants you. There is nowhere to run. And we are going to eat you alive. It's a jungle in here. Predictable and cruel. But then one day, Tony Brown and his whole fucking family died. Tony Brown was a rotten little fucking asshole. He used to hang out with Jimmy Falco and the rest of them. Apparently, Tony's father worked a whole lot, and his mom was left feeling somewhat... unfulfilled. So, she'd started getting fulfilled by one of her co-workers on their lunch break. Somehow or another, Tony's dad found out. So one day, Tony's father took his lunch break early and chopped his wife and her boss up in the bedroom. <laughs> they said he kept chopping them up even after they were dead, like wood. That part I remember particularly well. Tony's father waited patiently for two hours until he got home from school.
Then he shot Tony at close range with a rifle and hung himself in the backyard. Honestly, so what? There's one less asshole in the world. Four less if you count the adults. And when it comes to assholes, you can count these people twice. On this somber occasion, I have chosen as the subject of this homily a passage from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Let wives be subject to their husbands as to the Lord, because a husband is head of the wife, just as Christ is head of the church, being himself savior of the body. Wives, submit to your husbands. How simple is that? What we have here is the failure of a woman who sinned against God and against her husband. And what is the result of that? Her son is lying in that cold gray casket right there. A boy. A dead boy. And where is his mother right now? In a fiery lake in hell with an entire eternity to answer the question, was it worth it? Iniquity, infidelity, infidelity, fidelis, faith, infidelity, unfaithful. Wives, submit to your husbands. Should we help it? Yeah. From then on, we were friends. We grew up as friends in this pretty little town that was rotten to its core, surrounded on all sides, wondering which of them would be the next to explode like Tony Brown's did, or produce some new breed of homicidal monster. Maybe it would be that one. Maybe it would be our own. later, when Jackson started crossing the street to avoid walking in front of that old fucking church, I never even needed to question why. I already knew the answer. Let's go, let's go. I better not see any of my football players dogging it. Come on, go. Attaboy. Come on, ladies. Oh, Palooka, Jesus, come on. 
Your ass is dragging in the dirt. Move it! Emily! I'm a broken goddamn record for six years. Once again, no gym clothes. And once again, you're failing gym class. Unbelievable. What are you reading? Sylvia Plath. Sylvia who? Exactly. I want to see you in my office before the end of the day. What about? Just do it. Before the end of the day, just be there. You wanted to see me? Yeah, come on in, Emily. Sit down. Have a seat. I want to talk to you about your little performance in class today. Emily, have you ever wondered why you can't seem to focus? Why you just don't fit in? I mean, have you ever wondered, like, Where's the fucking beef? Um... I want to show you a book, Emily. It's a book that saved my goddamn life. I'm sorry, I don't mean to curse in front of students, but it's just you and me here, so... Fucking... Anyway... I was at the absolute worst part of my life. Going nowhere. No direction. I was a weird little loser like yourself. In this book, this book brought me out of that nosedive. And I want you to have a free copy of it. I want you to read this, Emily. And I want you to look at yourself in the mirror. And I want you to ask yourself, where does my power live? Where does your power live, Emily? Where does my power live? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, good talk. Oh, and hey, please do me a favor. I'm asking nicely. Wear your motherfucking gym clothes tomorrow, will you? Oh, and hey, stay away from that Jackson Marshall kid, too. He is the weaker twin that you're in the womb with. About that last bit, he may have been right. Oof. I always knew that Jackson was different. He felt things differently from the other kids. Some things he felt more, some things he felt less. <laughs> Jackson! Jackson! I guess I should tell you about Jackson's parents. That's something people always want to know about. What were the parents like? Well, that was a pretty average. And this fucking mess! <coughs> now get over here. Get over here. And fucking clean it. <coughs> By the time I knew Carl, he just sat in his chair all day, drinking and staring at the TV. He was paralyzed, had awful spasms that would come in the middle of the night sometimes. Sometimes the muscles in his chest seized and he'd have to be injected with a muscle relaxer so they didn't squeeze him to death like a boa constrictor. Most days he just shit his pants. Jackson's mother hung around for the disability and what was left of his savings, but she was out of the house a lot. Jackson didn't feel things like the other kids, but I believe that it was Carl who taught him how to hate. Thank you.
<laughs> you know the Beach Boys recorded a song that Charles Manson wrote? It's weird. <laughs> you know that the Manson family killed one of the guys with a bayonet? Really? They stabbed him in the throat with a fucking bayonet. Are they civil war being right here? <laughs> no, they were hippies. Oh, fuck. Look, where'd you go? Right here! <laughs> fuck! God, I hate this fucking game! Pull the fuck out. Yeah. And then one day, he broke. One day, Henry Pakula decided to piss into a shampoo bottle. As Henry later told it, it was a long, healthy piss. Jackson! You want to be talked to like you're here, Jackson? Well, you're not going to be here for very long. Let me tell you that. But you know what I think? I think that you're a little weasel, a degenerate, a grade D piece of shit. What you did to that boy is inexcusable. Cheap shot. Rotten. He's at the hospital right now trying to get his thumbs sewed back on, for Christ's sakes. They doubt he'll ever be able to use it properly again. If you were my kid, <laughs> I would get you home as soon as possible so I could mete out the most severe punishment of your life. And that was the end of Jackson, as far as most people were concerned. He was one of those whatever happened to's. Although later they all pretended they were real close with him. When they had microphones in their faces, everyone had a story to tell. The truth is, he disappeared. Most people forgot about him, and he even stopped calling me. He said he had a lot of appointments and he couldn't go out anymore. I had my own shit to deal with and forgot about him for a while. When my friends have all This is Peter Kelly. Please leave a message. When the money has all dried up to dust, how did I get here? Fucking cliche.
What you're about to see is actual footage from the airstrike earlier today, just outside of Mosul. And look closely at the the there he was, Prince Charming. Always there in the nick of time. While Jimmy Smith carried the ball 21 times for 185 rushing yards and a touchdown of the goal. Catch the Ravens next week as they take on Charaho. After my mom's incident, he started coming around a bit more, which is what mom always wanted, ironically. I guess she found where her power lived. I think that was around the time that Jackson met Mr. James, who was supposed to be like a mentor slash social worker or some shit like that. He was appointed by the district to check in with Jackson for the curriculum, but then sometimes he would do stuff with him too. Mostly, he took him hunting. They met at his house once, Jackson saw his gun collection, and that was it. Sure, in retrospect, this all probably seems very obvious and clearly a bad idea, but you know men and their bonding bullshit. Jackson's father probably said, it's, it's good, good for the, for the boy, boy to learn, learn how to shoot, or some stupid bullshit like that. Dude thought he was Robin Williams, starring in a movie about himself, not arming the next white boy terrorist. <laughs> Finally. Some positive reinforcement. He got fired two months later. A cop pulled him over with a bag of coke and a 17-year-old. Thanks for the weapons training, Jiminy fucking cricket. <laughs> that summer, we were 18. Jackson played with guns. I played with drugs. They didn't really do much for me. Lost my virginity. <laughs> Red on the road. Injected a speedball. Unfortunately, I may have overdid it. Went to rehab. Came back. She's here. I'd like to report. in the past. You're always pretty tough to get through to, but I tried. I really did. Precisely because I didn't want us to find ourselves in a situation like this. And what kind of a situation are we in, Principal Elwood? Well, Emily, we're in a situation where we're gonna have to make some tough calls. We have a he said, she said it's a misunderstanding. Now, I understand that uh, you were out partying last night with Jimmy Falco and some of the boys, and something might have happened, which is delicate. I don't know if you're aware that some of the boys you named are very important members of our football team. Jesus. Christ. These are the good kids, Emily. Now, listen to me. The fact is, is that you are one girl with a history of drug use, intoxicated at yesterday evening's party where we have witnesses who say that you were attempting to score drugs. Now, we can't. I mean, we can't with any certainty believe that your version of the events is truthful. Well, I certainly don't mean to fuck 
with anyone's version of the events, sir. But does their version happen to have any explanation for this? Now, Emily. Emily, I want you to believe me. I'm going to have a good, long talk with those boys. Ah! Fuck you. All right, OK. This fucking town can suck my dick. Nice. Little cunt. How are you feeling today, Jackson? What? I asked how you were feeling today. All right. You seem to be off somewhere just now. What were you thinking about when you were looking out the window? I was thinking about Mercy Brown. Is that a friend of yours? Jackson, do you ever think about hurting people? In what way? I don't know. When you attacked that boy in the shower, did you think about doing it? Sure. Those kids are assholes. Do you think they deserved what you did to them? I'm supposed to say no, right? She was a lazy shrink, and she never followed up until the police were questioning her. So let me fill you in about what Jackson was talking about. Mercy Brown. That's where we got the name everyone made such a big deal of. That was our club of two, the Friends of Mercy. When we were 13, Jackson's mom bought him a book of haunted places in Rhode Island. The only one we could ride to on our bikes was the one in town, the gravesite of Mercy Brown. We hung out there sometimes. Once I did a school project on her. She died in 1892 just a little over a hundred years ago. Mercy Brown was the daughter of a Providence store clerk. Two months earlier, her mother and older sister had died of consumption. It was decided by her doctors, due to her pale skin, bloodshot eyes, and rapidly failing health, along with a sensitivity to sunlight, <laughs> that the family were being attacked by vampires. She was whipped. She was prayed over. She was stripped and bathed in ice. She was made to drink the blood of her dead mother, which her family kept at the advice of their doctors. Of course, it wasn't vampires killing Mercy. It was tuberculosis, so she died. Then in January, her brother Edwin got sick. He was the only boy in the Brown family and the heir to their name. The Brown women were all dug up. Their coffins were pried open and the men of the village gathered around. Even the local paper was there. Mercy's body had only been in the ground for two months. The others had been buried longer. Because her body was in better condition than the others, it was decided that Mercy was the vampire who had been feeding on the Brown family. And so her heart was ripped out of her body, staked in front of the camera, and burned at the graveside. I knew what he meant when he asked me about it, which means I also knew better than to say so. Mercy wasn't a vampire, just a sick kid. 
But that didn't mean there was no such thing as vampires. so-called Friends of Mercy killings in Rhode Island. Police are learning more today about the Friends of Mercy, two local teens accused... And Commissioner, what do we know about these uh, Friends of Mercy? Jackson, I think we're having trouble controlling your anger, and I'd like to talk to you some more in the coming months. In the meantime, what I'd like to do is start you on a regimen of a pill called Bestatrol, which will help to regulate your moods and keep these kinds of outbursts under control. There will be some things you need to know, however. You may experience suicidal thoughts while on this drug, Jackson. You may also experience some nausea and a kind of dissociated feeling, as if you're viewing your life through a pane of glass or in a movie. If that happens, you need to talk to me about it. They fed him pills until his tears dried up.
Three months later, he passed an evaluation and they let him out. For a while there, it was cool. Like old times, like we found something good about ourselves that we lost touch with. We were older, weirder, but it was cool. We even opened up the old fort for business. Anything? No. Hmm. I think you have a saliva problem. Me? David? I hate this church. Yeah. Somebody should burn it down. You want to see something? Keep it in your pants, will ya? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Holy shit. Check it out. Hey! Shit! My mom tried to kill herself? <laughs> You're an asshole! Well, relax. The safety's on here. It's lighter than I thought. Where'd you fucking get a Glock? For my birthday. I've got six guns at my house now. and been stashing a few extras in the woods. Jesus, kid. Prepping for the zombie apocalypse? See that light? the last of the good times. The rest of this shit I've been over a hundred times in my head. I can recite it from memory like the Pledge of Fucking Allegiance. Once the news media gets a hold of things, they're ridiculous. So I felt it was important to keep the facts together for myself. On October 3rd or October 4th, I was smoking weed in Jackson's garage and he was telling me about this drill press he bought. He was all pumped up about some tool I didn't understand, and I was fucked up at Instagramming, so I was half listening to begin with. But he said he was learning how to convert his gun, and I didn't know what that meant. He was nervous he was gonna fuck it up because the gun was expensive, I remember that. But I mostly figured, whatever, more gun bullshit. Expect 
Temperatures to be from the mid to high 60s for the rest of the week. Perfect to get out and start your spring line process. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Tanya. That's good news for all of us here at Providence. And that's a wrap for tonight's edition of Rhode Island Channel 13 News. I'm Bob. On October 27th, he called me to help move his father's shit out of the living room. It was two days after the funeral. Jackson was off his meds. His mom and everyone seemed super pumped about how well he was doing, and his therapist was talking about him finishing school. He was really coming along. Then, while I was there, he took me in his room and showed me a blueprint he made of the school, using real blueprint paper. It was pretty accurate, too. He said he'd scoped the whole thing out himself. He seemed very impressed with his ability to do that. I asked him, why? Because someone should put this rotten fucking town on the map. <laughs> so, um, I guess that makes you the uh, publicity agent, right? What makes you think this place is shittier than anywhere else, huh? Give me a fucking break. You know, okay, don't give me that because you of all people should know. I get it, okay? I understand. But this, this is just some fucking rock star cowboy bullshit, okay? That's what that is. Fucking grow up. If he had listened then, all of this might never have happened. was gone again, and this time it would be for good. It wasn't even on the national news. Something like this happens literally every week somewhere in America. We need a body count of ten now to even stand a chance. But it gave the locals something to talk about for a day or two. 
There's broken pieces in our past, but even broken bones. A local man named Jackson Marshall was arrested today on charges of conspiracy to commit a mass shooting. Police are interviewing him as we speak after Mr. Marshall was found to be in possession of a large arsenal of weapons outside an area high school, which police have now confiscated. Jackson was never cut out for it. What was it Coach Griffin had called him? The weaker twin? I guess that makes me the stronger twin. The one who survives. Who doesn't get caught. Who blends in. Shh. Be quiet. Let's see what you're made of. This is the story of our friendship. This is the way it began. Jackson had it all wrong. But who could blame him? Motherfuckers were running the whole world. Not just at school, that was only the beginning. They were winning everywhere. Everywhere is too much to think about, though. So kids attack the world they know. But it's stupid. It's pointless. Short attention span, look at me, bullshit. That's where I get off. Some people think it's the guns, but I know better. It's not the guns. It's deeper than that. Since Mercy Brown, since all the way at the beginning, America is a dead kid. Powered engine. But when a thing needs doing, you put your shoulder to the wheel, and by gosh, you get it done yourself. Yeah. Yes, John. Yes, I absolutely think it's going to work out this weekend. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes, I'll be sending over some uh, volunteers from our youth program. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to find that there's some really, really fine young men. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to thank you so much for the, uh, the donations. Very much appreciated. And I wanted to tell you that we, uh, we are very grateful for the work you're doing over at the high school. 
and that uh, the faculty and student body are in our prayers. Yes, indeed. Well, you know what? Our mutual friend will be in touch with you about uh, this weekend. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. And uh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes, you bet. Good night. The problem with today's kids, they want to do everything the easy way. I have money. if you could trust a drugged out bitch. <laughs> well, guess what, you fucking shitbird! I hope you can fucking trust me now! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Coach Griffin? Hey, this is Emily Kelly. <laughs> You're never gonna fucking guess whose phone I'm calling you from. You with Jimmy Falco tonight? <laughs> yeah, we're all fucking partying and shit. <laughs> I said you were fun to party with. Why don't you come on out and party with us, huh? We're all just chilling at Jimmy's trailer. You ever been? Yeah, I was out there just last week. So you're partying out there, huh? Hell yeah! Come on out here, I want to see you. I bet you can teach me some things. Well, I don't really know if I should. I mean, I'm pretty busy, you know? But... I guess maybe I could swing out there for a little bit. I don't know. Excellent. I'll see you when you get here. Stead. Luca, you old piece of shit, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm out here at uh, Jimmy Falco's place. Yeah, you can come out here, just give me some time because I am closing in on some sweet pussy that I've been working on since she was in sixth grade, yeah. <laughs> Not mean? <laughs> oh yeah, yep, yeah. all right. Check you later, masturbator. Ugh! <sighs> 
figured out where my power lives. Henry Pakula of Piss Bottle fame. What the fuck? Coach? Oh my god. Oh fuck. <laughs> There must have been something in the air that night. Or maybe it was just some fucked up mutant strain of mother-daughter DNA that we shared. She knew it was over before she saw me, before I said anything. And she seemed relieved, like I had freed us both. Hard day, pussy. Are you stressed today, my little pussy? That's okay. Mama's got a big, big dick. It's gonna make you feel oh better.
graph when you see. Come on. Get it. Get it. You know you want it. Get it. Come on. What the fuck? <gasps> oh, goddamn! I was not expecting this. Oh, Emily, what, oh, Emily, what are you doing? That is a mighty big dick you have, Miss Hopper. Would you like to see that? <laughs> Listen, I think I'm a pretty open minded person. So I don't want you to think that I'm judging this in any kind of like objective way. But you know, in a more personal way, I am really very disappointed in you right now, Dad. I have a message for you from Mom. You're gonna try to kiss me again? <laughs> Go on. Come on. It starts all you're gonna get.
He deserved a chance to run away. Grow up. Figure out what his life could be like somewhere else. In a place where no one knew him. As for me, I found a place too, where people are simpler, easier to understand, more honest. I feel quiet here, better. Besides, they know better than to try me.